God be the glory. You may be wondering why we're moving along on in the service. Yes, it's preaching time. We're going to stand before you today and give you a word, and we'll explain it a little later as we go along. But today I woke up this morning, and God kind of dealt with me all last night. He kind of put upon my heart to kind of come in and not so much as preach to you today, brothers and sisters, but to talk to you. To talk to you about some different things. Pomper Grove is getting ready to move in a lot of different directions, a lot of do a lot of unique and great things. Today we had Sunday school with our teenagers. They tried something a little different. It was called Sunday school with the pastor. So I'm inviting all parents, if you will, bring out your kids for Sunday morning uh, Sunday school lesson. It's something a little bit different that God kind of put on my heart to do. And I think that it, it, it will yield fruit as time goes on. So I'm inviting the teens to come out again and have Sunday school with the pastor. Amen? Amen. Amen. Uh, I, today, we're not really going to do a sermon sermon. Today, we're going to give you something prophetically. We're going to give you something that God has placed on my heart and asked for me to tell. It will be biblical. It will be defined in the word of God. We're getting ready to start a new sermon series, and the new sermon series we're going to start is uh, The Struggle is Real. Uh, but today, I, I, I want to talk to us about storms. I, I want to talk to us about the storms of life, the storms that we go through, the storms that we deal with. And, and today, as we look at storms, I, I've learned, brothers and sisters, that storms in, in life, you, you, you're either going into a storm, you're already in a storm, or you're coming out of a storm. And the reason I want to bring this up to you today is that one of the things I've learned about storms is that it comes with preparation. How one prepares themselves for a storm determines how one deals in the storm. And one of the things that I have told you when I first came here today when I first came to the church, I told you, I said, I felt God placed on my heart that it was time to build. It was time to get some things in order. It was time to get some things situated in our lives. And last night, landing in the bed, I believe God kind of gave me a new revelation to tell you all. I believe, brothers and sisters, that between three to five years from now, there's gonna be a difference in the atmosphere of church. Not just saying Palmer Grove, I'm saying church as a whole. I think God is going to usher in a change. He's going to usher in some things that are going to press, shake together. He's going to, he's going to push and make sure that everything that is neatly compacted is going to go from there. I was going to talk to you all about uh, Matthew, the seventh chapter. I was going to look at verses 25 through 27. We're going to talk about what God is saying that building on a strong foundation and the various things from that nature. But God began to show me that before the building project needs to be finished, there will be storms. After, excuse me, after it's finished, there will be storms. And I, I want to say that to you to say this because I, I, I'm being real with you. I'm not trying to fake the funk. I'm not trying to come in and say, you know, this, that, and the other. But if we don't prepare now, we won't be able to stand when the storm comes. In that seventh chapter of Matthew, it talks about sandy foundation and solid rock foundation. It said that you have to build on a solid rock because if you don't build on a solid rock, that sand would be like sinking sand. It'd be like quicksand or whatever you put on top of sandy soil will eventually wash away. If it washes away, then everything that's on top of it either washes away with it or it falls down and crumbles. So, so, so the Bible shows us three different stones that I, I, I want to just talk about for a quick second. It talks about a storm in the book of Genesis. It was a storm of destruction that when the people on earth had got so, so very bad that God sent a flood that came and wash sin away. 
The only way that their people were saved is that they had to be inside of the very vessel that God had ordained to be made. They had to be inside the ark of the covenant in order to be saved, in order to be uh, situated in a way to be preserved for life afterwards. And today, brothers and sisters, I want to tell us today that the Bible also still speaks of a storm. A storm that's going to come in Revelation, a storm that's going to come and it's going to rain fire and brimstone, a storm that's going to wipe out all of the sin from off this earth. If we are not preserved, if we are not confining ourselves in a place that where we can be preserved, we will be consumed. I go back to preparation. We must prepare ourselves now, spiritually, physically, emotionally, for what's to come. I know it don't sound good. I know you may not believe, you may say, who the heck this man think he is standing up here before you? But it was the same way with the prophets when they came and said the same thing to, to the people of God then. They spoke a word, and because the people did not adhere to it, they suffered the consequences of it. A storm is going to come. Watch my, my, my words. It's, God began to show me some things. The prices of things are already starting to go up. You go to the grocery store, there's not still not food on the shelves. I stopped to get gas today, unbeknownst to myself, I didn't realize gas price. The gas was four dollars and fifteen cents to put gas in the vehicle today. It's going to get to a place where the storm is going to be so heavy upon us that if you are not doing what you need to do now, you're going to suffer the consequences. Let me, let me show you something. The devil operates. The devil normally give you and allow you to feel like you got everything you need. That everything is good. Everything is honky go dory. Then the rug is pulled from underneath you. I'm trying to say to us that we have to be smart now because I feel that God is saying if you don't make the necessary steps now, you won't be able to catch up later. Don't allow the storm of destruction to, to, to take over you. What am I saying? The storm of destruction kills. It destroys things that God hates. It destroys sin. It comes in and destroys the very thing that we stand on. Some of us enjoy the simple pleasures of life more than we enjoy our relationship with God. Some of us enjoy what we can get tangibly than what we're getting spiritually. Some of us are not realizing that God is getting sick and tired just like he did in Genesis. The Bible said that he regretted that he even made man. And he said that I got to take man and wipe sin off the earth. But he found one righteous man and he put one righteous man on an assignment and one righteous man preserved his family. And as a result, the world was preserved and was able to fall on. Palmer Grove, are we the church that God can use to preserve? Are we the church that God can use on side the road to, to, to save somebody else? God is doing great and amazing things here. And I believe that God is going to do great and even more amazing things. But it's going to take for us to be committed. It's going to take for us to be prepared. It's going to take for us to do what I told you last Sunday. Don't look back. Put, no, excuse me, Sunday before last. Don't look back. Put your hands to the plow and don't look back. I told you heaven is a prepared place for prepared people. If you have not done preparation, there is no invitation. You must be prepared to enter in. If you have not done what you have been required to do, then there is nobody's fault. But yo, that seventh chapter of Matthew talks about that. He says they're going to come a day where people are going to say, Lord, Lord, didn't I do this and didn't I do that? 
And he's going to say, because you didn't prepare properly, because I didn't know you, you can't come in. So there is a storm of destruction that I believe that the world is going to see just like that pandemic that happened a few years ago. I think within five years, God is going to show us something that's going to show his hand to show you that he's sick and tired of what's going on in the world, that he is tired of dealing with all of this here mess that's going on. So that's the storm of destruction. He also began to show me that there's a storm of correction. A storm of correction is just like old Jonah. Jonah was put on an assignment, but Jonah did what Jonah wanted to do. Jonah said, in my way, I'm not going to do it God's way. God said, go. Jonah said, no. Jonah said, God said, go to Nineveh. Jonah said, no, I'm going down to Tarshish. I'm going to the farthest point from God. And brothers and sisters, I, I, I asked you a couple of Sundays ago that it's now time to reach out to those who are not here. It's time to put hands on them. Because it's going to come a day that they're going to need the church. But because they have no connection with the church, God is not going to honor them. Hear me on this here, brothers and sisters. I talked to someone the other day who is going through the storm right now. One of the things that that person said was, Pastor, I, I, I want to come back. But right now, I'm dealing with some, some things. I asked you a question, and it, it, it dawned on me in, in my mind. Why wait till you get in the storm? Why wait till you going through something to seek God out? I always use the analogy, it's better to put money in the bank when you got it. So when you don't got it, you can go cash some of it out. Brothers and sisters, hear me on this here. Jonah did what Jonah wanted to do. And because Jonah did what Jonah wanted to do, Jonah, the Bible says in that fourth verse, I believe it's the fourth verse of Jonah chapter one, that God sent a, a, a terrible storm because Jonah was headed in the wrong direction and God had mercy. See, sometimes we don't realize that a storm is God's grace and mercy. He could, could easily take you out. But what he does is give you an opportunity to correct what you've been doing. He gives us an opportunity to get back on the right track, to get back in a place where we can start moving and doing what God says do. So God sent a storm to rock that boat. And he made even trained sailors get to a point where they were scared of what was going on. And when I preached that to you, I told you they even threw money overboard trying to save them lives, their lives. The moral of that lesson is that sometimes in a storm of correction, you lose more than you gain. Sometimes you're trying to do so much to gain, God will put you in something that it will take it from you that you don't even gain what you uh, work so hard to get. Never lie, what I'm saying is that if we're on the wrong track, and I'm including pastors as, as well, if we're moving in a direction that is not uh, in accordance to the will of God, when that storm comes, don't, don't let it come. Do it before, but if it comes, know to repent and get back on track. Jonah didn't get back on track to Jonah prayed and repented. Sometimes God will cause us to be put in a situation to get our lives in order. Sometimes you have to go through something to see that. The last thing, and, I, and I'm going to be get ready to be done. The last thing, the last storm I want you to see in the Bible, it talks about a storm of perfection. And in a storm of perfection, it means that God is trying to perfect, so he will use a storm to perfect something in your life. Last, yesterday I talked about that in our time at Brian Grove. And in Matthew, the chapter 14, what was going on, see a lot of people, we, re, we read that, but it, what that whole chapter is trying to teach us two things. It's trying to teach us that Jesus Christ is Lord. He's Lord over food. He's Lord over nature. He's Lord over uh, 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 sickness and disease. 
And in that last part of the fourth chapter, he's Lord over demons. He is Lord. But the next thing it try to teach us in there is that sometimes God goes like this. After God done showed you something, he showed them in, in, in feeding more than 10,000 people because it said it was 5,000 men, not including women and children. So, so he showed the disciples something. He, he told them, what do you have? They said, we got two fish and five loaves of bread. We talked about fish and chips yesterday. And in those fish and chips, God came about and moved and did some miraculous because they didn't believe because God told them, you feed them. But they realized they couldn't feed them in their strength. They needed God. So as a result, to teach them about faith, he told them, take up, take up. The rest of the leftovers, they took up more than they gave to him. And it's some about putting it in God's hands. When you put it in God's hands, God can do some miraculous things with it. But when you try to keep it in your hands, it'll mold, it'll dry up, it'll run out, it won't be no good. But it's some about putting it in God's hands. So he told them in a storm, I, I need you, constrain you to go ahead and get in a boat. I, I need you to get yourself in a boat and go over to the other side. I, um, yesterday we talked about, it's one of those things when God forced you into a situation. That when God said, no, no, you're going to get in this boat and you're going to go on over to the other side because there's teaching time, there's, there's testing time. And sometimes you got to be separated from your test for your test. And sometimes God has said, I'm going to put some distance between me and you. So when you're in the storm, you can understand, do you really trust me? Do you really believe me? Do you really count on me in the middle of a storm? And so sometimes God will push us out to test us. During that testing time, it's perfection. Palm Grove, we're in season two and three. We had an opportunity a time to correct and a time to perfect. I told you all this year that God gave me that one word. When I first came here, I told you that God said build. And I thought God was saying, okay, Lord, what will we build it? God told me initially that first year, he said, take care of my house. So we went through and we have tried to do everything we can within our power, within our means to take care of God's house. We tried to come in and bring light in the house. We tried to change out, edify, and beautify God's house because God said, why does my house have to be in shambles when you living in palaces? Why, why, why does my house not to be looking like any and everything and you living in some big uh, luxury homes or whatnot? So we tried to come in and show God that we want to show him the Lord, we honor your house by trying to take care of your house. The second thing, the second year I told you, this year is the year of ministry. In the year of ministry, there's some things in ministry that we got to, I have, I, I put out an APB during church conference. I said, the next meeting that uh, the uh, ministry have, I said, invite me, I want to be a part of. I ain't got, I got one invitation and that don't, that mean no, uh, the mission, that, that mean don't happen to March. I ain't got no more invitations from anybody else. But I'm going to tell you what we're going to do. We go, I'm, I'm going to have the means. I'm going to call the means. I try to come to you because I understand that we're in a season of correction. There's some things that we got to correct about what's going on. Because if we don't correct them now, it's going to be a problem when the storm comes. We have to get in order. I told you all from the very start that God is a God of order. And if things are out of order, God is not a part of mess. So if we want to get on a place where we're doing things to please God, to glorify God, to magnify God, to praise God, to worship God, we got to do it the way God says to be done. So we got to go through a season of correction. In that season of correction, it's going to, it's going to require then test. You don't learn better. You know better, so you should do better. And as you know better, you do better. The test is going to determine if we do it or not. Because, see, it makes no sense to be like the disciples. They got Jesus in the boat, and you rowing over to the other side, and you trying to do it in your strength, knowing that Jesus all along is in the boat. I don't know why they waited so long to go to Jesus. 
I learned that I can't do it in my strength. I need Jesus to pull me along. So we are going to have to get to a place where we realize, why am I saying this? And this is what God showed me. I believe it. I thank you, Holy Spirit. In order for us to be a light, you got to be a bulb in it. You can have a pretty lamp, but if you don't put a bulb in it, it ain't doing you no good. It's just on display. It's sitting around looking good, but ain't doing nothing. And you, we are to, God has chosen Palmer Grove to be a light. To be a light in the midst of darkness. To be a light when the lights go out. To be that that, 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 that holy light that sits up on a hill, that sits beside a road to bring men and women in. It's, we are to be a light unto other people. God showed me something that people are going to look up to Palmer Grove. That people are going to come in and say, why is everything still going good there? And we got more members. We got more money. We got more this, more that, more ministry. We got more everything. But why is over there still going strong when we got all of this and it's not? It's because we made a commitment to say we're going to keep God first. We say that we're going to follow God. And as God moves, we move. As God stops, we stop. I want to say this yet again, and this, this is the sermon. That, 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 that's the whole thing today. That I promise you, Palmer Grove, and I want you to, somebody write this down. I want you to put it on the calendar. I want you to say the pastor said, on February the 5th, 2023, within three to five years, there's a storm going to rise. And it's going to be determined by this date right here, by this time frame, have we, God's grace, have we did what we need to do in order to be ready for the storm? I, I end with this right here. I talked to the leadership team about this when I first came on board. And I want to give this analogy to you. When the Pharaoh was having a dream and Joseph had to come in and explain the dream, he told him, he said, oh, oh king, there's going to be a famine in the world. I'm not saying there's going to be a famine. I'm not, I'm not using this as an illustration. But he said, if you don't start preparing now, you got seven years to prepare that it's going to be seven years worth of famine. So you got to make enough preparation on this side to sustain you on the other side. The famine was so vast and broad that it not only did what they did help sustain Egypt, it also helped sustain everybody that came in to get a little something from it. Palmer Grove, mark my words. Not only if we, if we do what we're supposed to do and how we're supposed to do it, not only will we take care of our own, we're going to also be able to help somebody else that will need to come in and be taken care of too. Mark my, my words. Yeah, I know you don't believe me. I'm telling you, God, God hit me on the shoulder last night, woke me up last, I, I, out of my sleep and began to show me things about this here. I, 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 I told you, I, I want to go and preach Matthew 7. Verse 24 through 20, I mean 25 through 27. And we'll get to that one day soon. But God said, no, no. When I went downstairs today to start preparation for my sermon. This is these three things God gave. Storms of life. Preparation, dedication, determination will help us prevail, persevere. But we have to be willing to commit to it. I want to say this, and I'm saying this in love. I want you to know I'm saying this in love. My mama told me, I can be honest with you because I love you. I don't want to tell you something to make you think one way and you get out and your friends talk about you, this and that. There's one thing that God said that we got to deal with in Palmer Grove. And that's one thing is commitment. Hear me on this here, Palmer Grove, and I'm going, I'm going to walk up them steps there and be done. Unless we commit, to God, we won't succeed. Because see, if we start thinking that we can do it by ourselves, we won't, we're going to make a mess. We need God more than we ever th thought of. We need him 
We need him in our homes. We need him on our jobs. We need him in our cars. We need him in our church. We need him in our community. We need God. We need him. And we can't make this journey without him. Because if we try to make this journey without him, I'll tell you what's going to happen. You're going to get lost in the desert. And you won't find your way home. Somebody that's been, I mean, uh, Reverend Douglas, he know what I'm talking about being in the desert. In the desert, everything looked the same. In the desert, you can, it's easy to lose direction in the desert. That's why God led them through the wilderness. Led them to the place they needed to be to get with it. But they, they had to be dedicated to it. Because why? Everyone who was not dedicated... God turned them back. He said, I tell you what, you're going to walk around this mountain. See, the Bible don't show you, but if you go and you look at their travels, all they did was that same mountain that they met God on, God turned them around. They walked around it for 40 years. Walked around a mountain for 40 years. The Bible says that a generation died out and a new generation was set to go in. We're that new offspring that God wants to go in and birth and do great things here in uh, Burr County. I just need you to trust me and get committed. Commit to God. Don't commit to pastor. Don't commit to this church. Commit to God. If you commit to God, everything else is going to take care of itself. Everything else will fall in line. But if we're not going to be committed to God, then like I said, we just might well run amok, wait our time out, and you'll see what, I, what I'm talking about come to pass. Amen? Amen. Amen. I'm, I'm going to leave it right there, that right there. I know that was a little bit different. I know that didn't, probably didn't go over well, probably didn't, didn't stick on you. It probably stuck on you. Probably mad as it is sticking on you. But I want you to know that I love you. It is very important for me, Palmer Grove, that we do what's right with God. If it ever gets to a point where I'm leading and I'm not doing it for the glory of God, I'm not doing it to, 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 to elevate and magnify God, I want you to do me a favor. I want you to go ahead and vote me out. Because everything that I try to do, I try to bring on to God's name. And if I'm not leading you in a way that's going to bring honor to God's name, to glorify, to magnify God, to elevate him, then I'm not the man for the job no more. But I give you my word as, as, as God is my witness and my wife knows my heart that I love you with everything I got. And I'm not willing to go in and sa not say sacrifice because I'm not going to sacrifice my wife and my kids, but I will try my very best to do whatever I can for you. I don't hold anything back, but I need you to us. I need us to understand. I won't say you. I want to put us in this here. We have to be committed. If you're in ministry, be committed to the ministry that you're in. If you're in this church, be committed to the church that you're in. If you're committed to to to, to your uh, your family and to God, bring God into your family. If you're committed, bring God on your job. If you committed, bring God wherever you are. Put God before you. And if he's before you, I promise you, he'll be behind you. He'll be beside you. He'll be above you. And he'll be beneath you. Why? Because God is a protector of his children. Amen. To God be the glory.